Hey everyone, welcome back to Folklore. I'm Nito King, and today we're going to be playing as Ellen for the first time in Chapter 7. Aside from very brief periods before switching to Keats. She's now wearing the Cloak of Midnight Sun, which, as the description says, is pretty much a Cloak of Sea, just looks a little bit different. And the color is reversed. But this cloak recovers MC much faster than any of the other ones, which makes some of the expensive folks like Fomor actually usable. But of course, since we've already been through the first half of this realm as Keats, we should probably see what it holds for Ellen. Not a lot has changed here, if anything. It's a lot less like one chapter that you explore as two different characters, and more like the same chapter, which you can go through as either character. So the things that these fairies say don't change from one character to the other. At least this time I actually am Ellen when he's addressing me as Ellen. The bad news is that there's not quite as much variety among the folks for Ellen. As you can see, we're fighting Telenthera first, just like we did with Keats. And I already know that I'm going to need to be able to keep my distance. But I had a folk in here somewhere that needed to defeat Telenthera, I'm pretty sure. It shouldn't be hard to find. There were only three Karmas I hadn't built up by now. There we go. I need to defeat three Telenthera with Barrager. But, of course, I gotta capture one first. And... Nothing from the Endless Corridor. It was, I believe, for more. I need to defeat three Gladiolus, which we've also seen will appear in this realm. Not that that's much of a surprise, because this is the final realm. Every folk we haven't seen yet will have to appear in here somewhere. And if this Telenthera would ever stop disappearing, I'd be able to capture it. Yeah, Barasher doesn't do a lot of damage, but he's still pretty effective. And you wouldn't be surprised to learn that Telenthera is a wind element for Ellen. And we've got to defeat a bunch of Muscari, which is another folk we haven't met yet. I don't think we'll actually be seeing a lot of those. Well, Hazard, I think, would be effective, but for once, it actually missed. Fighting Telenthera really isn't that different from fighting Garbera, I don't think. Just, it's got that one additional move where it shoots its hands at you. You can pin it and just bash it with something. Not a problem. So over into the dead end room, as Keats here, we managed to find a picture book page, and I'm pretty sure it would also appear for Ellen if we came here as her first. Naturally, I didn't, because I wanted to capture all the folks available as Keats before fighting the Fairy Lord. And there, we've suddenly got some folks to fight. The real problem with Telenthera's attack is it's on a delay. You summon Telenthera, and then it just sort of sits there before finally launching its wind. It doesn't increase the power of it or anything, it's just... that's how long it takes to go off. If you want a quick wind attack, you probably want to use either Garbera or Bailwind. Then again, here is Muscari, and this is the only folk that Ellen is going to meet in the entire chapter that Keats doesn't. It's going to be a long chapter. Especially since Telenthera isn't very good against moving targets, or really any kind of targets. But Muscari have a bit of a wind-up before they charge at you, and that's sometimes enough to get the job done. Muscari is a thunder attack, and it kind of continues the trend for Ellen's folks in this realm. It sits there for a while before it finally goes off. I'm sure it's really strong once it does, but eh, you can't really hit things with it reliably. 
especially Tel and Thera, that surround themselves with things that'll stop Muscari from charging. At least Tel and Thera just shoots a projectile and then disappears. I'm not going to get through with this, am I? Not a problem. We've got attacks that don't need to be able to get close in order to do damage. Although I do still need to avoid getting hit too much. And Telenthera's big thing is that its ammo count increases. Now we've got two tornadoes. And, of course, we'll be getting a third one. We need to absorb a whole bunch of these folks, which I guess means it's a good thing there's so many of them. And so much for Muscari. It becomes stronger, but again, you have to actually manage to hit things with it. Which isn't easy. And I would love to believe that it's weak to wind, but I don't think it is. That or Talanthera is just a really weak attack, which doesn't mesh well for the fact that it takes so long to work. And I got to do that four more times. So, lots of folks here. I don't think I need to capture any of them. Defeating Telenthera with Bullseye or uh, Barrager is going to build it up. And Barrage is starting to grow on me. Yeah, that's me not even letting Telenthera get his hit. Just knocking the Muscari out of the way. This is admittedly not one of the most fun parts of the game. And I think you can even find most of these folks, if not all of them, in the second half of the chapter, so... If you went through the first half as Keats, which is how I recommend it, you don't even really need to come back and do this part as Ellen. This is mostly just showing you what it is that's actually here. And it's a lot of warm tree nuts. And at least as Keats, you would get some rare items in here. Although, there's a yellow stone. I think you might be able to get a purple stone from one of those crystals as well. It's probably random even if you do get some good items in there. Alright. We'll just repeat these rooms a couple times. Build up some of these folks. I mean, they're here, they're convenient. Anything I can do to not make the grinding video an hour-long slog. And Barrage is stronger, which is good, because it was never very strong to begin with. But I have no further need for Telenthera. In the meantime, that's Ellen's grab bag. In Keats's, it's more of a combo melee attack, and Ellen's, it just sort of charges forward a bit, hops a couple times, and then start spraying presents everywhere. And this is about when I realized that I actually do need to capture some more Telenthera. I forgot to check its karmas once I caught the first batch. We'll come back here, pick up a couple more items. Capture, I think, ten more Telenthera to unlock the final tornado. Which I think is really the only way that it actually has any advantage over any other folks. You know, Garbera's got its instant attack. Covers a pretty small area. Telenthera's wind at least moves forward, 
and covers a wide patch. Only it takes forever to start doing that. And no, I'm not going to just get over it. So maybe Thunder will at least be more effective on them. See, I'm not really sure how the weaknesses work. I know Thunder is usually effective against Water Folks. So you'd expect Wind to be effective on Thunder Folks and maybe Water on Wind Folks? I capture these two and I should be done building up Telenthera. I don't even know how I knew the red id was there. I don't think I saw it. And now I can't even tell what direction I'm facing. This fight is going very quickly. So there we go. That's Telenthera with three tornadoes that take a second or two and then slowly move forward. It's really not impressive whether you build it up or not. But at last, Ellen gets another destroy attack, and it will be Gladiolus. Once I've managed to deal with the Muscari. The only really bad thing about Muscari is that they're so high up, most of your attacks will go under them. But Bailwind is very effective. And like I said, no delay. Not really sure why I thought Thunder would do anything. It was more a case of forgetting what folk I had equipped. Gladiolus, of course, is immune to anything but the destroy element. And I didn't dash quite in time. As always, Ellen's lack of destroy element folks is going to be a problem here because she doesn't really have all that much that's going to be effective in fighting Gladiolus. But I got my couple of usual standbys, so let's see what's available here. And for more, not too bad when you recover the MC that you used fairly quickly but you really need something else in the middle to use while you're waiting for that MC to recharge. Might seem kind of contradictory to you know, use more folks while you're trying to recharge your MC, but it actually does work. Because the other folks will have their own downtime, and you'll get a lot more MC back than you would expect. Gargantua not effective because Gladiolus is going to be near me most of the time. And he's already almost done. At least it takes him a long time to recover, but not long enough to do enough damage with Bargus to take him down. So let's see what else we got. Koropuna actually a little harder to use than Scryker, I find, because Scryker will explode on contact with the enemy. Koropuna is strictly timed. And Gladiolus? Well, it has its own problems, too. This is about the only effective use for Muscari, and even there, I could have used Good Boy a lot faster. At least they make sure we're stocked up on health. And I'm pretty sure all these crystals are going to be health. Not likely to be any items in them. Tons of health. 
And considering I don't think the folks here are nearly as much of a threat to Ellen as they are to Keats. Need three more Gladiolus Ids. Not difficult as such, just it's going to take a while to capture them. So, not going to worry about it, not going to hang around and wait for them. At the very least, I'm not dealing with Bougainvillea here. And yeah, that's how long it takes for Gladiolus to use its attack. It's strong, but it takes forever. Not very useful. And as far as I can tell, Telenthera is immune to all status elements. But Muscari can be put to sleep, so that's helpful. And Habitrode, of course, one of the few folks that can reach Muscari while it's at the top of its flight. You want to fight Muscari? I think sleep is definitely the way to go. And now I can hardly believe I wasted all that time with Telenthera and Balewind. It does seem to wake up as soon as you hit it, though, so... You'll be seeing Habitrot a lot. Just a ton. And while I don't think Bond is gonna work. You gotta try it, because Telenthera is really annoying with that teleporting. Without the teleporting, not bad at all. And so we've just got this final batch of crystals, and another Telenthera teleporting out right in the middle of my attack. <sighs> Lovely. I really used hobbledy all that minute. And more folks continuing to appear in the room, one after another. Big batches of folks appearing all at once. Me hitting the wrong button on the wrong folk. I'd say if there's an episode that I'm probably going to post in the thread telling everyone to skip, it'll be this one. Hey, there's Puka acting as a shield. Don't think you see that all that often. Now, are we finally done with the enemies? One last crystal. And we could move on. All right, if I gotta fight you, I gotta fight you. I'm too used to things actually appearing for you know, killing all the enemies. I don't think there's anything like that in the Netherworld core. Nothing will appear when you've defeated all the enemies, at least in the first half. Second half, I think there are a few of them. But, you know, there's no more pages, no more cloaks. Alright, there's one more page, but I don't think you have to kill everything to make it appear. I do like the way you can see all the other rooms from this room, though. Makes it feel a lot less like a series of disconnected rooms, and more like a space that you're moving around in. Hard to find your way out of the Fairy Lord's room, though. And finally, we've made it back to the portal. So, I realize I haven't actually talked to any of these guys yet. We are nearing the end of the game. And 
I think this is the same thing that Bogle said before. Yeah, pretty much. And talking to Keats, he'll just offer to switch places with us, which we don't want to do yet. Because the next part, we want to do Ellen first, because she'll be the one fighting the mini-boss this time around. So join me for that, and some actual new folks, next time. <laughs>